called Stereo MCs. And I'm Nick from Stereo MCs. I think for us the interesting thing was that uh, uh, we, we, uh, we managed to evolve our sound and uh, make some tracks which were uh, more extreme in their ups and downs and the kind of light and dark in the way it sounded and in the sort of style of the music. I think with this record we wanted to do something that sounded um, modern but we wanted to do tracks that were rooted like if you imagine Bo Diddley playing a, an electronic you know what I mean, modern day. We wanted to do something which sort of reached back, but at the same time had a, a modern edge to it and a modern sort of pressure. I think I know what you're saying. Um, I think, you know, back then, I guess there was uh, the, way we made, the way we made our music and stuff and the way a lot of uh, hip hop producers and dance producers made the music was quite an unknown area in a lot of ways. Not every, you know, everybody had their own sort of methods of getting their music together. And these days, I think uh, the avenues to making music on, on kind of uh, te technology-based instrumentation um, is available and to everybody. And these days, everybody can be making music at home on their computer using the same equipment that anybody who's making records is using. Do you know what I mean? So it's quite accessible these days for people to get to grips with uh, modern sound. But I still think, um, you know, that I remember, you know, there'd be producers you really liked. And the reason you liked them was because there was a feel about what they did. And it wasn't really about the gear they used or the, you know, whatever it was they did in the studio. It was something to do with the feel they had as a, as a person when they made the music. And I think that's really probably the key to it, you know. And I think, um, I think it's easy to make records, but it's also easy to be very anonymous. And if you look at electronic music, the ones that stand out, for instance, Kraftwerk, you know what I mean? It's still, it's, you can't avoid the sound of Kraftwerk, do you know what I mean? Their identity. And it's easy for people to go and get the right equipment. And, you know, in a way, anybody can sort of knock up a tune in a computer because it's quite, it's made quite easy for you. But the difference is, I guess, um, making your own sound and writing your own songs in your own identity. And, you know, and that's what we try to do every time, I guess, is because we are you know, because of what we are, we still sound like us, but we try to put different elements in it to, f to keep, it, keep it current and try and write better songs. Because ultimately it's down to the ideas more than anything else. If you've got a good idea, then that's 90% of the, the music really. The rest is all sort of, um, you know, really just, dressing and what you you know what I mean what you do with it's really down to having a good idea and being inspired and I think you can go through different stages of your career I think with this this album Paradise I think we come out of another period where we had to change record companies because we felt stifled with the major record company they were very much on to you know the sort of pop groups like Busted and Sugar Babes, and not very a very short attention span to anything that wasn't instant pop. And uh, I think we've come through that. We got our own label, and in a way, we've kind of touched base with how we started. You know, which was starting your own label, pressing up a thousand records, taking it around the shops. It's a kind of fun way of doing it, and I think it gets you back in touch with the reason you started making music in the first place, which is why you do after all why you're doing it you know what i mean without those kind of elements it becomes a, a pointless experience do you know what i mean if you're just doing it for the money or you know all those kind of things it just becomes sort of vacuous and i think you end up not really putting anything into the music and i think with paradise we see it as the first stage of a new progression for us you know what i mean i think it's uh, you know we just kind of we feel 
we're back in a place where we want to be with our music. Yeah, well, when, uh, when we were putting our studio together, someone was selling a Hammond cheap. And, uh, you know, we've always had a, a liking for old instruments, you know, that, uh, that sound nice and dirty and uh, earthy sounding, you know, like old roads and Wurlitzers and stuff like that. Just because um, they're quite gritty, you know, and uh, it's a bloody thing, man. It had to be lifted down on a winch. It's so heavy, you know, through a hole in the floor back into the studio. But it sounds really good. And I remember the first time we used one in a studio in Clapham. Just here, we got this proper keyboard player to come down and play it on Connected. And it just sounded amazing when he, when he opened up the volume on it. And it just filled this room out, you know, with the bottom end on the bass notes and everything. It was like something else, man. Incredible sound to actually be there when yeah. someone's playing it. The, the way we do our music is very, uh, <clears throat> it's a mixture of technology and a sort of do-it-yourself principle. And sometimes, you know, maybe I'll just have a Walkman on me and I'll, you know, you can have a little idea and I'll just go and record a bit of the Hammond on my Walkman. You know, because it sounds all nice coming through the little, you know, the little microphones on Walkmans makes it all kind of nasty. And I just sample that into the sampler and, and sequence it, you know, and you can get, just get a different texture, you know what I mean, by, by using, you know, nobody knows how, how you make your sounds, do they? And that's the, that's the sort of beauty of it. Mm -hmm. 